In the last video, I talked about creating nonlinearities and chaos through interference patterns between two oscillators, having two oscillators FMing each other, but mediated with a step generator in that FM loop. So as to create these regions of stability and have uh, the two oscillators kind of dance around and fall into these regions of stability where there's a nice rhythm or loop and then kind of break out of them. And in this video, I'm going to do the same thing, but using something called a Rungler, which is another Hordike circuit. I'm going to use the Runglers on this lower mill double knot, which has two Runglers. I introduce a different piece of gear to the channel with some trepidation. Pretty much every other YouTube channel uh, talking about modular synthesizers or synthesizers in general is about making you want new gear. Uh, and I really don't want this channel to become a parade of new fetish objects. Uh, that shouldn't be too hard because it, I don't really have much other gear. I pretty much sold much of my gear to build the Surge. And I'm really introducing the double knot only because it has these Rungler circuits and also because the double knot was my first banana synthesizer and really opened me to going down this path of chaos, nonlinearity, um, all the things I'm talking about in this channel. And it interfaces so well with the surge that I do consider it to be basically a part of the system. The Rungler is a circuit that seems really complicated. Uh, it's kind of wrapped in a lot of mystery and it comes up with all these weird farts and blurps and bleeps. Um, so it seems really much more complicated than it is. So I'll just break it down really simply. The Rungler here has a data input and a clock input. And it's a sample and hold and a shift register. So basically when the clock input gets a pulse, the value in the data input is sampled and held, just like in a sample and hold circuit. When a new clock impulse comes in, that previous value is moved to stage two of the shift register, and a new value, whatever is in the data input, is sampled and held. And with each new clock input, these values move down the shift register. And there are eight, this is an eight stage shift register. So once it gets to the end, um, and you have on the on the on the double knot outputs for stages five, six, seven, and eight. Once that value is in stage eight, it just leaves. And so you have this shift register constantly sampling the data input and moving it down the line. In the Rungler, each stage of the shift register is actually has a resolution of only one bit. So it's helpful to think about it digitally. Um, basically. This input can be any sort of continuous voltage signal, a triangle wave or whatever, but the sampled value will either be one or zero. I assume there's some sort of threshold at two and a half volts or something, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. But so each of these is actually only one bit resolution, either a high or low value. The interesting thing about the Rungler is that at any given point in time, this shift register is full of ones and zeros and it forms basically a binary word. There is a ladder of resistors, basically a bunch of voltage dividers, that converts this word into a continuous voltage value. So if all of these bits are one, that'll be the highest output out of this. This is the Rungler output here. So that'll be the highest value. If they're all zero, then it'll be the lowest value. And then there's anywhere in between. The bit in stage one is the most significant bit, the bit in stage eight is the least significant bit. So we actually get all these interesting voltage values coming out. Okay, so great, what do we do with this Rungler? Well, what we do is we actually do something very similar to what we did last time in taking two oscillators and creating interference patterns. We're gonna take the square wave from one oscillator and go into the clock input. And we'll take the square wave of a different oscillator and go into the data input. And you can see it moving now. And in order to hear it, what we'll do is we'll just take this same uh, clocking value and ping a variable Q filter, and we'll take this Rungler output and control the frequency of that pinging filter. Okay, so we have some nice weird motion here, some drippy textures. 
But what we want to do now is do some feedback. And the real heart of the matter here is feeding back this Rungler output into the frequencies, uh, into the frequency modulation of both the clocking and the data oscillators. The real fun from the Rungler comes from playing with the frequencies of these two oscillators and their FM amounts, the amount that the Rungler is changing their FM. There's also cross-modulation of the freq of the oscillators FMing each other that you can use. And what you get is these really weird patterns, and it sort of locks into these strange patterns and fun little melodies and weird little things. So I'm just going to play around with that to show you all of the different things that this can end up sounding like. also take the triggering impulse for the variable Q from not the clocking oscillator but the other oscillator or we can take it from one of some of these bit outputs in the shift register. Hordike initially designed the Rungler as a sort of uh, rhythm and melody generator, this thing would, that would just sort of spit out ideas, spit out melodies and things, and would sort of lock itself into weird patterns and then move on. And that's exactly what it does. And it's great for uh, people like me who are uh, lazy, to just have this machine that you can patch in all these different ways that's spitting out all this weird stuff. Um, the cool thing about the double knot is there's a second wrangler here, so you can imagine you can use that to get another contrasting thing full of motion and life. Hordike put this Rungler circuit into his famous Blipu box. Blipu box had a couple of other interesting features. One thing uh, is it had a comparator to compare the two oscillators. What we can do here is actually not trigger the variable Q filter from the Rungler, but trigger it from a comparator and basically compare the square waves of the two oscillators here in the comparator and play around with that. So let's see that. And I'll take the comparator output and just put it in the OR circuit here so we can have an LED to see when the comparator is firing. When we have things moving faster, we can also use the handy top side of the uh, divide by n comparator to divide these comparator pulses by any number from 1 to 31. So there's a whole infinite world to explore in here, and similar to the last video, uh, this is a pretty easy way of occupying yourself for hours and hours and hours and hours and never getting bored. Due to the nonlinearities and chaotic nature of this system, we get a sort of endless procession of weird, interesting patterns and loops and loops that they, they don't really, they loop for a couple phrases and then we'll move on and then maybe move back. It's really just a, an endlessly entertaining way of seeing how these circuits sort of, again, as I keep mentioning this channel, organize themselves into these weird patterns. Again, it's this sort of life 
that you imbue into the synthesizer that really starts to that really makes things fun and again not this sort of top-down impose imposition of structure but rather the synthesizer organizing structure itself so if you don't have a double knot or a wrangler you can of course uh, mimic some of these things with existing circuits either in the surge or in whatever synthesizer you use we can use for example two slope generators as oscillators um, and use the comparator to compare the slope generators and use a step generator in the feedback loop just like we did in the last video to again sort of exploit these interference patterns to create all sorts of different textures and different interesting uh, phrases so if we see what that looks like so for this i'll just take the comparator take a triangle from one slope generator, a triangle from another slope generator into the positive and negative of the comparator, and I'll loop this lower slope generator. And we'll use the comparator once again to trigger the VCFQ. And what we'll want to do is take this comparator and just like in the last video, exploit the step generator to do a sort of in a sort of FM loop between these between these two driving oscillators. So we can trigger it from the comparator pulse and say we can take the input to be this bottom slope generator and then take the output and run that into the FM of both slope generators. and also use that to control the frequency of the oscillator. So I hope you enjoyed this video. The Double Knot is really a wonderful little synthesizer, fully self-contained. Like I said, it was my first banana system and is a whole world in and of itself. Um, I like to think about the name, the double knot. And to quote Thomas Pynchon, no, this is not a disentanglement from, but a progressive knotting into. And I like to think about using the double knot and creating all these knotty feedback structures that fold into themselves and create these weird sound worlds full of life. So whether you're looking to get into some of these ideas about feedback and cybernetics at a lower price point than a whole surge system or you're just looking for a fun little friend and companion for the surge or other synthesizers or just on its own the double knot has really been is really just a an amazing little synthesizer and more than any other piece of gear that i've found over the past 10 years encourages you to just keep on playing with it and is an endless source of fun and inspiration and weird little sounds. So I hope you enjoyed this fun little diversion, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.